All right, so we're working with the graph of this polynomial looking function. And our goal here is to determine the equation of this polynomial function. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that by looking for the equation in factored form first. Now you'll see that this factored form equation has a few parameters that are missing. I have this A value at the beginning, which is really important. And then I have these values of R, S, and T. Now the values of R, S, and T are gonna to correspond to the x-intercepts of the polynomial. As it turns out, the x-intercepts are going to be key here to find the equation of this polynomial function. Now, before we get into determining the equation of this polynomial function, do me a favor and determine the equation of the like button down below. So as I said, the x-intercepts are going to be key here when it comes to writing this polynomial equation. Okay, so let's just start by pointing out what those x-intercepts are. We can see here that the first x-intercept is located at negative three. We have an x-intercept at located at two, and we also have one located at five. Okay, so what I wanna do is take that information and somehow translate it over to my equation. So what I've just done is duplicated my factor form equation here, and I've removed the R, S, and T parameters. And what I wanna do is replace each of those parameters with one of the x-intercepts that we just circled on our graph. Now, the order that you do this in doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna go from left to right, just to keep things simple here. I'm gonna start with that negative three. I'm gonna replace R with negative three, okay? So when I do that, I don't touch that subtraction sign. I'm gonna leave that there. And I'm gonna place a negative three where the R was, okay? Now you're gonna see I have negative, negative three. Now that's really uncomfortable seeing that. So what I'm gonna do is just change that into a positive. I know that negative times negative is a positive. So this set of brackets here is gonna become x plus three. So I'm just gonna change that for us here to x plus three, okay? So that's the first set of brackets in my equation of my polynomial function. Now I'm just gonna repeat that process as I move from left to right. So looking at the x-intercept of two, again, I'm gonna replace s with two. I'm not gonna to touch that negative. I'm gonna leave it there and I have a two. So I'm gonna put my two and you can see here that I don't have to change the sign because I have a positive two and my original equation had that subtraction sign. So I've got X minus two. Moving right along to the next x-intercept, you can see that I have one located at five. Again, I'm gonna replace t with five. And because that five was positive, I don't have to worry about that subtraction sign. I can leave it just as it is. So we're getting pretty close to what looks like an equation of a polynomial function, okay? The only thing that's missing is I've got this pesky value of a here. Now that value of a is really important because that's gonna tell us how much our graph has been stretched or compressed in the y direction. If I neglected to write that a, I would assume that there's a value of one here and the equation would not match the graph that I've got here. So what I wanna do is show you a way that you can determine the value of a so that we can finalize our polynomial equation here. Now the trick here is remembering that that notation, f of x, that's the name of this function. We're assuming it's f of x. That's just the same thing as writing y, okay? I'm gonna just write a y there for a moment and I'm gonna show you why. <laughs> There it is. Now in the equation of any function that relates X and Y, we can think of X and Y as just any point on that function. So if I take a look at this polynomial function, there's many points that fall on that function, right? They're found all along the curve. Now I'm gonna pick on this point in particular because it's very easy to see the coordinates of that point there. That's the Y intercept and the coordinates of that point are zero, 10, right? We have an X value of zero and a Y value of 10. So what am I gonna do with that point? Well, I'm gonna go over to my equation here and wherever I see a Y, I'm gonna replace it with a 10 because that's the value of Y at that point. And wherever you see an X, I'm gonna replace it with the corresponding X value, which is zero. All right, so let's take that step right now. I'm gonna replace that Y with a 10 and working from left to right, wherever you see an X in that equation, I'm gonna replace it with a zero. And at this point in this process, you can see that I've eliminated any unknown variables or parameters except for that A parameter. So this is going to allow us to determine the value of A and we're gonna do that using a little bit of simple algebra. So I'm gonna leave that 10 alone on the left-hand side here and I'm gonna jump over to the right-hand side and I'm just gonna clean all this stuff up here. So I have zero plus three, I know that's just three. I've got zero minus two, I know that's just negative two. And then I've got zero minus five, that's just gonna be negative five. Okay, so I'm just simplifying the right side of my equation here. So continuing to clean up that right-hand side, I'm just gonna end up with that A value and I'm multiplying by three times negative two times negative five, which is just gonna be 30, right? So I've got a 30 here, I'm gonna slap that in some brackets. And I've got a very simple one-step equation where I can solve for the value of A. Okay, I'm gonna divide both sides by 30 here and that's gonna provide me with an A value of 10 over 30, also known as one over three. Okay, so I'm gonna write that as a simplified fraction of one over three. Now I'm just gonna jump back to my original general equation here. And the reason for that is that I have to remember that I need to go back and substitute all of this information back into the equation, right? So I have to replace my A value, my R value, my S value, and my T value with all the information that I determined from my analysis here. 
So doing that will result in this equation right here. Now it is written in factored form. And if that bothers you, you can of course feel free to go ahead and distribute to multiply, collect your like terms, and you're gonna end up with this nasty little equation of the polynomial function right here, which I think is a lot worse. You can't actually see the x-intercepts by looking at that equation. I definitely prefer factored form. All right, so that is the process that we use to determine the equation of a polynomial when given its graph. Now, if you wanna to learn to go the other way and create the graph when given an equation of a polynomial function, you're gonna head over to this video right here, and I will see you there.